biological dad, but honorary dads are great Christian examples of dads. Um, uh, when we go to praise and worship, um, I want to explain something a little bit. We're going to sing, I am free, because we know Jesus has set us free from our sins. Um, if we ask him to. Everyone will sing through the verses, but when the chorus comes, you will see men and ladies on each line. The men are going to start. Um, Leslie is going to be singing with you, so follow her, and we'll be able to try to hear everybody. So, and then the ladies will join in with us on the echo. All right? So if you'll sing, praise the Lord, and let him know we appreciate Oh, my God. 
But they love our church so much, and they feel like they're part of our church. And Josh is here on Wednesday nights at Bible study. And uh, I appreciate the prayer so much. And you see why prayer is so powerful, because it was just, I don't know, 18 weeks ago that they were telling me in the brain to and, and, you know, he's already talking to me about having to die with three kids and his wife and all the things that's going on. And now it's just a little, what do they call it? Cyst. And it's going to be fine. And the medicines have stopped the seizures. Your prayers have a great deal to do with that. You know that? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. That's why we pray. That's why it's so important to pray. That's why on Wednesday night, I've been encouraged. We had Wednesday night prayer meeting. We were lucky to have eight people here. Now with Facebook Live, we get 40 people praying. Isn't that awesome? Hi, Facebook Live people. Love you. And we do love the Facebook Live people. You know, one of the things that we have to talk about, loving people. You know, we're still pushing loving people because there's, there's loving people that... Uh, uh, you know, we have to love people about all the things that are going on in, in our country right now. We may not agree with everything. Do you agree with everything that's going on in our country right now? No. Do you love the people who disagree with you? That's where the rubber beats the road. Because you're a follower of Christ. So when you got two Facebook friends on, and one of them says... I want to tear down all the statues of Christopher Columbus, and the other one says, I think these people are the stupidest people that ever lived. Which one do you love the most? Neither one of them, you love them both the same. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Because people are going to disagree with you. If you have friends, why am I still got this thing on? 20 feet away from me. Does anybody hear me at all? <laughs> I'm sorry. How do you feel about the COVID stuff, you know? But some people, they think it's stupid. I saw two people yesterday that were going to live through the day. Okay? That's how stupid it is. They were on ventilators on their way into a special dialysis that's been built for COVID patients. And their families will tell you it's a hoax by the federal government. I'm sure as their loved ones are dying. And you know, you have some people that are scared to death to go out of their house. And you have some people that think it's stupid and they want to go surfing, surfing on a beach with a thousand people eating some COVID-infected peanuts. Because they're not scared. Which one do you love the most? You gotta love them all. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Because people are different. People have different opinions. And boy, if we could just get this love and stuff down, we could sure change the world. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about today as we keep moving on in John. And, and for those of you on Facebook, I am really sorry. Or on Facebook Live, I'm sorry that I have not said anything yet. But uh, turn to the eighth chapter of John. We're going to start on verse 21 today. And we're still where uh, Jesus has went to town for the feast. And he's still fighting with the Sadducees and Pharisees. But today, we're going to talk about something that's really tough. And I just kind of hit it. What is the truth? What is the truth? Everybody wants to know the truth. And, and you know, most of us are looking for the truth. I know I, I was telling one of my best friends this week. If I have a billionaire, do you ever have a great ideas that you would do if you were a billionaire? You know, I mean, sure, beach house and hell, yeah, that's a given. But anyway, what else would you do if you were a billionaire? And one of the things that I would love to do if I was a billionaire, I would start my own news network. And I would only tell the truth. There would be no opinions. There would be, you know, I might not like what I'm reporting, but I would not offer any opinion about it. Because I, I, I personally crave the truth. Wouldn't y'all like to know the truth? 
that there's not an angle to, and, and it's tough. Where do we find the truth? You know, the, do we find the truth in our family? Hopefully, in, in our family. I'm doing a premarital counseling with a couple right now, and, and one of the things that I talked about this week was lying, and, and what lying does. Once you tell that first lie, and the other person catches you in the lie, what a gap. Oh, yeah? And, you know, there's that gap of like, well, now anything they say, is that the truth or is that a lie? And we feel that in our lives when we catch people. So we look at, and then, like I said, on the TV news, what's the truth? You can turn things to 24 different channels. Like I said, I love, I love working at the hospital. One of the things I love working at the hospital is the different rooms I go in because some of the rooms that I go in, and I have no idea how anybody can stand this, okay? Some of the rooms that I go in, 24 hours a day have CNN on. They never turn it off. Some of the rooms, 24 hours a day, have Fox News on 24 hours a day. And I'm like, hey, if you go to 33, the Beverly Hillbillies are on. <laughs> Why do you see what LA Man is doing today? Not to mention Jethro. But there's some people that sit there and they just watch that all day and they're constantly hitting their buttons saying, I need more pain medication. It's not the surgery, it's the channel you've got on. I couldn't watch that without having events either. Andy Griffith's going to be on soon. But anyway, it's not a new thing looking for the truth. It's always been, we even remember that when Pilate is with Jesus before he gets crucified, before he crucifies Jesus, Pilate says, what is the truth? He even wants to know what the truth is. And that's 2,000 years ago. And he was working, if you want to talk corrupt governments, all you need to do is get into Rome. There was all kinds of corruption going on with the Caesars and all the stuff that they were pulling. You know, and uh, bad, bad stuff. So we really want to know the truth, but here's what happens. When we find out what the truth is, we may not like the truth. Did you know that? You may not like the truth. You know, I'll never forget when I was a kid. I think I was 20 when it came out. I don't know how many of you know this, or I'm going to tell you a little story. Glenn Miller was a famous big band musician. How many of you in here know who Glenn Miller was, okay? And Glenn Miller went to perform for the soldiers in Europe. And the German shot his plane down. Yeah, we read the stories about Remember the Alamo, and how the guys fought like crazy because they screamed to Remember the Alamo. Well, like 50 years after the day Glenn Miller was shot down, the government finally told the truth, and the English army shot Glenn Miller down. It was not the Germans at all. And they told everybody that the Germans did it to lift morale, to get people all excited. And then 50 years later, I don't know why they waited for the 50th anniversary, 50 years later, they told the truth. And they wonder why we can't trust things. I watched a crazy show on TV the other night that showed a guy getting a fight with the great movie director Stanley Kubrick because he walked into the wrong studio and walked in on a fake live stage broadcast of the moon landing in 69. And that the moon landing never really happened. You know, it's a big thing. People argue back and forth. Did the moon landing really happen? Some of you will say, yes, it did. I remember watching. I also remember going out on the balcony. I was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I went out on the balcony to see if it was a full moon that night. You didn't see this guy's on the moon. <laughs> I'll never forget that night. I could see him on TV, but I couldn't see him on the moon from that balcony in Myrtle Beach at the Buccaneer Motel. But yeah, I was also nine years old, before you think too much of it. Uh, but anyway, the thing of it is, is that we, we, we're so far off from so many truths, and today, we're told that Jesus isn't the truth. And yeah, it's not new, because 2,000
2,000 years ago they said that Jesus was the truth. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And we have to come to a decision that Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the truth. That's what he says. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. Everything that he says is the truth. When we follow Jesus and we learn that he is the truth, we learn that everything else is just a bunch of garbage. Just a bunch of stuff that just falls away. And we have to stay concentrated. But here's the thing. As you hear your story today, there's a tough thing that you have to do. We're in it right now. Do you believe it? Are you wearing masks when you go out? Or are you not wearing masks when you go out? That's a statement of your belief. How mad do you get about some of the protest stuff? It's a statement of what you believe. What you believe is the truth. What do you believe is the truth about Jesus? And that's what we're going to talk about today. And as always, before we go to God's Word, let's ask the Lord. God, we just ask you to bless us today as we try to learn your Word and try to know the fact that Jesus is the truth and that we can trust Him and that we can believe Him. And Lord, I just ask that you will be with us as we, as we learn this and take this truth to heart and that many more lives will be touched to learn that Jesus is the truth. And if we live that life, it would change the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Jesus preaches a message on the truth. And there's nothing better than hearing the truth preach about the truth. Oh, yeah? And that way we learn it a lot better because... Uh, Wanting the truth, like I said, is not new. People have always wanted to know the truth. But a lot of people are scared to know the truth. Do you realize how many people that you know are scared of the truth? I was sitting in the, in the oh, I don't know what they call it, the nurse's cage or whatever you want to call it, where we all have to go work on our computers. And I was working on the computer yesterday and sitting there with all the nurses. And they're like talking about really scared about all the things that's going on in the world. And I said, you just, I, I love y'all kids, because they're all kids. And I said, I love y'all, but you just need to relax and trust Jesus. Because I said, this is just revelation unfolding. And they said, well, what's one well, of the next things that's happened? And I said, well, Jesus is going to come back and get his people. And they said, well, so this is going to be really bad, Jesus is going to come and get everybody. I said, no, Jesus is going to get his people. And then it's going to get really bad. And, and I'm not kidding you. I could have preached an hour sermon. I had attention like you couldn't believe. And I'm like, you know, when you learn God's word and you learn that he's the truth and you learn this stuff, you're not afraid. I said, Jesus may not come next week. Jesus may not come till 2028. Jesus may not come till 2026. Or till 2026. <laughs> He may not come that far. He may not come till 2060. But the thing of it is, is that his word tells us what to expect. The answer is that times are going to get so bad, you'll be afraid to walk out your front door. We've talked about that the last couple weeks. And so some people are scared of that truth. What if we're getting close to that? What if we're getting there? What if we're getting close to that? What's the Bible say every day? Pray. Lord Jesus, please come soon. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. People are afraid of that. And in John 8, 21 through 24, it says, Jesus also told them, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you cannot go where I am going, and you will die with your sins unforgiven. The Jewish leaders asked, does he intend to kill himself? Is that what he means by saying we cannot go where he is going? Jesus answered, you are from below, but I am from above. You belong to this world, but I don't. That is why I said you will die with your sins unforgiven. If you don't have faith in me for who I am, you will die, and your sins will not be forgiven. Go out today and talk in a big crowd and say Jesus is the only way to heaven. How popular is that? You know, there's, have you seen these bumper stickers that have a cross and a Jewish star? And I don't even know what the rest of the stuff is. They're all symbols for different faiths. I don't even know what they are. 
And, and it says that they're, it says coexist. That's what it says. And, and you know, and, and it's fine to coexist, but you know what? If you love people, you have to tell them the truth. And the truth is, Jesus is the only way to heaven. How do we come to the fact that Jesus is the only way to heaven? It's not because a very smart preacher said it. It's not because Martin Luther said it. It's not that the, the first Pope, Augustus, or whatever said it. Jesus said it. Do you see that? Now that comes down to where your faith is. Do you believe the Word of God? I've been talking a lot this week about different people and people that are heroes and anti-heroes. And one of the things I told on this kid yesterday, and I've mentioned this to you before, is Thomas Jefferson's Bible in the Smithsonian Institute. They have Thomas Jefferson's Bible. And, and most people would say, why do they have somebody's Bible in the Smithsonian Institute? It was just a personal Bible. The reason they have Thomas Jefferson's in there is it probably displays that everything that Thomas Jefferson didn't like, he took a razor blade and cut his verses out. And we can say, that dude was a freak. <laughs> well, he wrote the Bill of Rights. Right? You look at all the things that he did, but it's pretty freaky to cut out what you like. Until you think, which verses of the Bible have you went through? Which things has society changed you? You know, I get people mad at me because I say, what's the last time you had a Sabbath? And then people get mad because it says, thou shalt not lie. And it says, you must keep Sabbath. And they're all equal. But they're not equal. Oh, yeah? Because lying is a lot worse than not keeping the Sabbath. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's, it's so we take our own little razor blades and we cut out and, 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 and the thing is is that that's because truths are tough and it comes from Jesus not from man he is forgiveness for our sins we have to be forgiven we cannot come into the kingdom of heaven with sin on us and the only thing that wipes us clean is the blood of Jesus Christ which is why he died for each and every one of us. But you know what? They, they, they couldn't accept it. I, I want to tell you right now. Believe it or not, you have an opinion about the election. And uh, I don't have an opinion about the election. I kind of have some opinions, but I'll share them with you because it's not political for them. But here's the thing. Some of you, whenever you see Trump, you can make everything that he says bad. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. And some of you, when you see Biden, you can make everything that he says bad. Right? Why? Because based on your camp, you hate one of those two guys. You say, hate's a strong word, Pastor. Come on. We're telling the truth today. <laughs> All right? And based on your camp, you hate one of those two guys. And so the thing of it is, is when we hate somebody... We can destroy everything they say. Well, that's what they did with Jesus. I want you to understand that. They just took everything that he said and they destroyed it. So what this whole beautiful thing about the forgiveness of sins and the Messiah coming and dying for them, he came to them, was he's going to commit suicide. He, we've got him right now because I'm going to tell you something. With everything he's saying right now, this is pointing to suicide. And I'm going to tell you, the Jews believed that suicide was an unforgivable sin. Just an unforgivable sin. There's no way that you can be forgiven for suicide. So immediately, instead of dwelling on the great things that Jesus did, they started accusing him that he intended to kill himself. They're getting that to the crowd. You understand what I'm saying? You got a crowd around, you got this one rabbi sitting here, and he's talking to the religious scholars, and they're listening just like they got it on CNN, or they got it on Fox News, and they're watching. And the religious experts say he's going to kill himself, which takes any credibility away from him. And that's what they were shooting to do. They wouldn't listen. They didn't listen to the main message. They didn't understand the truth. They thought suicide was a terrible sin, so they accused him. The 
See, we must have faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, society tries to separate us from this truth. And you can see that constantly. When you watch TV or you hear things or, you know, around Easter, you can always see all kinds of shows that tell that Jesus was just a real political figure and that he inspired violence. And that one of the ones I absolutely love was how hard he worked to fulfill his prophecy. I know I would just work my tail off to die on the cross, wouldn't you? <laughs> Seeing how that goes. And all the things that he did. And they will exaggerate these things to separate us from the truth. And that is where Satan is. But you know, one of the biggest questions for Jesus, it was 2,000 years ago and it is today, and, and I've preached a lot of sermons on this, is who are you? We are always asking Jesus this question. Who are you? Who are you to Jesus? You know, the truth of, your, of, of the matter is, as a Christian, you have days that you say, just who are you? What do you want from me? You ever say that? What do you want from me? Somebody really irritate you, and you try to be loving to them, you know? It would be a lot more fun to push them down the steps than to be loving to them. But he says to love your enemy. It's not easy to love your enemies. It's a hard thing to ask him to love your enemies. To look at people and say, go out and, and find people who are the most different from you. I, I have to tell you, in the Facebook era, I have unfriended people for pictures of pictures. Okay? Because guys know that there are guys out there that put some pretty disgusting pictures on them. So I've unfriended people for pictures of I have never unfriended anybody for a political opinion. And it doesn't mean that I enjoy their political opinions. It doesn't mean that I enjoy their opinion on Jesus. But once I unfriend them, they can't see what I'm about anymore. Oh, yeah? And, and that's part of loving people. Now they may just flip by my posts. Some of them Thursday commercials or Sunday sermons are pretty goofy. <laughs> I would tell you this, the kids at the hospital love it. So if for no other reason, they tell me, Dan, please keep putting your Thursday commercials on. We love them. They really love the other one the other day where I was in the dark. Anybody see that? Okay, just a quick Nielsen rating. Um, John 8, 25 to 30. Who are you? They asked Jesus. Jesus answered, I am exactly who I told you at the beginning. There's a lot more I can say to condemn you, but the one who sent me is truthful. And I tell the people of this world only what I have heard from him. No one understood that Jesus was talking to them about the Father. Jesus went on to say, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, you will know who I am. You will also know that I don't do anything on my own. I say only what my Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. I always do what pleases him, and he will never leave me. After Jesus said this, many of the people put their faith in him. He is who he says he is. That's one of the things that we have to understand and get down. That Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the only way to heaven. All the things that Jesus is, he is from God. He is the Son. But here's the sad part. You won't understand until you kill me. Now this was actually a prophecy. And people say, well, how's that a prophecy? Well, you don't even have to look any farther than Jesus' brother. A lot of you love the book of James. Jesus' brother wrote the book of James. James was a great early church leader. James never believed in Jesus at all until the resurrection. Did you know that? He hated his brother. He hated him. I mean, as you can imagine, mom probably put a little special emphasis on Jesus. We don't know, but I'm sure Joseph even put some special emphasis on Jesus as he grew up. I know that God entrusted me to take care of one of my children, take care of one of my children was his child. 
I would probably spend a little extra time taking care of that one. A lot of pressure there. Oh, yeah? And so James hated him. The other brothers hated him until they saw the resurrected Jesus. And then the scriptures tell us they became followers. And there were a lot of people that, that were like them. But Jesus said, and what they couldn't grasp is that he only does what God wants. Jesus only does what God wants. God, the head of everything, the Son, only does what God wants. That's why God constantly was saying to Jesus, he said, you know what? I'm so proud of you. He would even announce it because he always did. I want you to think of the scriptures. And I want you to think of Jesus' life, and what did he ever do that would disappoint God? What did he ever do? Remember the guy that came to arrest him, that Peter cut off his ear? He healed him. He, he healed the sick. He fed the hungry. When he was on the cross, talking about loving your enemies, when he's on the cross dying, he says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Which is one of the most amazing statements that you've ever heard. I've seen, since all these riots and all this crazy stuff going on, I've seen so much anger. And I know where the anger comes from. We're tired of our houses. All right? We're tired of not having our normal lives. I'm real interested to talk to Jim at some point because we got a, a, a rebate check from American Family because there were no accidents during the pandemic. We have to give it back now, don't we? Because <laughs> you shouldn't see people driving on 270 and 315 and the police are beside wrecks everywhere. And it's like, hey, we're getting out. And how dare you pull me over for a speeding ticket? Because if you didn't know this, through the pandemic, all the interstates, the speed limit became 95. <laughs> and there was nobody out there, nobody was going to pull you over with the chance you might breathe in their face. But we need out. And we're angry. And it's tough. And, and, and the thing is, is that when we get like that, we disappoint God. But you know, as people heard him talk and they listened, there was one of the things that people did. It's a tough thing to get new Christians to read their Old Testament. It's a tough thing to get new Christians to read the New Testament. You get them to read the New Testament, and then you say, okay, I want you to read the Old Testament. Why do I have to read the Old Testament? Because the Old Testament explains Jesus. You can't really understand Jesus until you explain, understand the Old Testament. So you need to read the Old Testament to understand Jesus. Well, I don't want to read it, and then they get to... Leviticus, or First Chronicles, and they say, are you kidding? I can't even pronounce the people's names, and you want me to read all of this. Yeah, just bear with it. Pray, ask God to you. But see, these people that truly knew the Word of God and knew what was coming, these people believed. They believed. You see, the truth will set you free. It's, it's, it's an answer that the world needs to know. If the world could learn right now, we would be in such a better shape. But Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for anything. It's so good to have Jesus as good for us. You know, I was about to pray to tell people this. I'm at the end of a hall yesterday, and somebody starts signaling for me not to go down the hall. And a poor man about 50 feet down, with his ventilator, is being wheeled in to go into the special dialysis room in these COVID houses. And I'm like, my goal with my leukemia and stuff is to be one mile COVID at any time. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah? And so when I see that, my stomach shivered a little, and I got a little wound, and you know what I did? I stood right in that spot, and I prayed. I said, Lord, I'm here just trying to help people. I'm trying to take care of sick people. Please protect me from this disease. And the minute I said that, I went about my business. And then it happened again about a half hour later. I just pray again. And I told my kids to pray for me. They're like, yeah, get out of the hospital now. No, I'm not. 
You know that? You ever do that? You ever ask somebody to do something? To ask God to protect you. What a demonstration of faith. What a demonstration of faith. You trust the King of Kings. You trust Jesus. You believe he's the truth because he says, I'm with you always. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. You see? He can make the world a better place. 31 through 38, Jesus told the people who had faith in him, if you keep on obeying what I have said, you truly are my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered, we are Abraham's children. We have never been anyone's slaves. How can you say we will be set free? And Jesus replied, I tell you for certain, that anyone who sins is a slave of sin. And slaves don't stay in the family forever, though the son will always remain in Abraham's family. Or remain in the family. If the son gives you freedom, you are free. I know that you are from Abraham's family, yet you want to kill me. Because my message isn't really in your hearts. And I'm telling you what my father has shown me, just as you're doing what your father has taught you. People can be slaves of sin. Did y'all know that? I mean, I know it's real easy to look at Adam. And you see how they can become slaves of heroin or alcohol. Have you ever seen somebody become a slave to a lie? They tell a lie and they become a slave to the lie. Or, or maybe they commit a crime that they never got caught up and they become a slave to the crime. We can become slaves of sin. But here's what's incredible. Jesus sets you free. You're free in
focus on you. Concentrate on you. And pray to you. That they want you in their lives. And they want to follow you. We love you so much. Thank you for the fathers that you've given us. For Father's Day, what an example they were to us. And what an incredible example the Heavenly Father is. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Share the love. Enjoy your week.